Okay, so I want to talk about space in complexity theory sense. So we've been talking about time, how much time it takes to solve a certain problem. Here I want to talk about how much space is needed to solve a problem. Here we're not going to worry about the time it takes, we're just only going to worry about the amount of space that's used. So what I'm going to define to be some function called space uh, of f of n. So the f of n is going to be the amount of space used. And I'll, I'll define that more precisely in a bit. So what this means is that I want to talk about Turing machines that run in basically f of n or less amount of space. And what does that actually mean about a certain amount of space? Well, if we, if we think about what a Turing machine does, then what it does is going to have the tape head, let's say, right there. Then at the beginning is obviously at the very beginning, and then it can go over here and then come back and then like go way out here and then come back. It's just, how do you define what the space actually means? The time makes sense because that's the number of transitions that are taken, but what does the space mean? So the space we're gonna define is to be the maximum cell place that you visit. So if the, the last cell to, furthest to the right that you visit is let's say that one, then what we're gonna define the amount of space that's used is this amount all of this so we're that's the amount of space that's used okay all of the cells over here i'm never going to touch because this is the furthest right cell that i'm ever going to see let's suppose and so therefore i must cross all of these cells at some point if i touch a cell then i'm going to include it in the space uh, allocation so what does space f of n mean what it means is that it's um, all languages uh, decided, I should say, by a F, big O of F of N space uh, Turing machine. So what does this mean? This just means that for all inputs of size N, then the Turing machine runs in at most F of N space. No matter what the input is, It'll, if, it go, if it takes at most f of n times a constant amount of space, then we say it's big O of f of n uh, space Turing machine. And space of f of n is just all languages decided by such a Turing machine. Okay, so I want to show some examples of one. So we've talked about sat before. So I claim that sat is in space of n. So if you don't remember, set is the problem of you're given a Boolean formula and you want to check whether or not that formula is satisfiable or not. So what you can do here, the naive algorithm, is just try all possible uh, assignments to the variables. And the key point here is, well, let, let's write it down first. So try all possible assignments. So again, we don't care about how long this takes, we just care about how much space is used. So all possible assignments, that takes two to the end time, but of course we don't care about the time. The key, here's the key point. We can reuse space, but we can't reuse time. So if I uh, try a candidate assignment and it doesn't satisfy the formula, then wipe the tape clean or the space that I had for the assignment clean and then write down the next assignment. Okay, so then what you do then is you're reusing the space over and over and over. Instead of having to write down every assignment one after the other, which would be a dumb idea because I'm not reusing the space, just erase the tape and then put the uh, next assignment down and then just keep trying. So then the key here for this problem is to erase the assignment if formula is not satisfied. So formula not set satisfied. 
or, or evaluates the true. And then you return false at the end, of course, if none of the assignments uh, work. None of them satisfy the formula. So if one of them works, then you're good. Um, then you return true. If none of them work, you return false. And I use linear amount of space. Why do I use a linear amount of space? Because I'm just going to write down a single either 0 or 1 for each of the variables. And then all I have to do is just make a copy of the formula and replace all of the variable assignments into the actual formula and then I can evaluate the formula in place. So therefore I'm only using a constant times the size of the formula amount of space. And so therefore SAT can be solved in a linear amount of space for that reason. Cool. So even though this problem is NP complete, which means that we don't know whether or not it can actually be solved quickly, the fact is we don't need a lot of space to solve this problem, which is really nice. Um, but we can talk about a different kind of, of complexity class. So space of N that was for um, deterministic um, amount of space. So that means the Turing machine is, is deterministic. But we can also talk about a non-deterministic version. So n space of, oops, I, I meant to say f of n here. So this should be f of n. And so this one should also be f of n. So non-deterministic space is exactly the same notion, except we are working with a non-deterministic Turing machine. There's a little bit of a, um, an issue here because there are choices that can be made. Um, but what we do is we just take the maximum over all inputs of size n across all choices of non-determinism that can occur. So it's exactly the same thing as non-deterministic time, where we looked at how much uh, time was used over all possible choices. It's the same thing here, but just with space instead of time. So non-deterministic amount of space. And it's very obvious that um, space of f of n is a subset of n space of f of n, which is pretty cool. Um, we can also note that since the Turing machine can only move right one position on every single transition, that if we look at the associated amount of time, the things that you can do with the space are at least as much as what you could have done with the time. So time of f of n is a subset of space of the same amount. Because here, uh, even if I move right every single position, I'm still going to have that amount of space and I can reuse the space here versus over here where I can't reuse time. So any problem that can be solved in f of n time can certainly be done in f of n space because I could just move right every single time and I, I won't exceed the budget of space at that point. And of course, if we have non-deterministic time here and non-deterministic space, they are, we have the same inclusion here. Cool. So uh, you can talk about various types of problems that can be solved in a certain amount of time in a certain amount of space. What I'm going to do eventually on the channel is something relating more uh, to do so with space and non-deterministic space. So all that we know right now is that deterministic space is a subset of non-deterministic space, but uh, how, do, how much more deterministic space do I need to be able to solve the non-deterministic space problem? So in other words, uh, if I wanted to have something like this, where I have space on the right side, what do I need to put on the inside in order to guarantee some kind of inclusion like this? And that'll be the subject of the next video.